Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am using some Trinity stamps, dies, and stamp sets that are designed for slimline cards. I'm going to be making an interactive card and a coordinating bookmark to go with it. We're going to jump right in to the Copic coloring. I have stamped my images, all three of them, from the Tall Tales stamp set with some Copic friendly ink onto some white cardstock. I'm going to use my Copic markers in the Y colors to color in the base or the body of my giraffe. I'm starting with Y15 as my lightest color and coloring the whole entire background of the giraffe with that. I'm bringing in my darkest color which is Y38 to add the shadows and bring in that golden look to my giraffe. So I'll go around the edges and just spots where I think there would be a shadow and filling those those in. I'm going to blend that out with my Y17 and you can see there there's like a polka dot on my giraffe. Yeah my Y38 marker just all of a sudden was like splat. Uh, these things happen but I'm going to clean that up you'll see here in a little bit and it won't even be noticeable so don't stress out if that happens to you. I'm coloring in the brown parts of the giraffe now. My darkest color is E39. I'm going to color that first just because the areas I'm coloring on right now are so small. I'm going to blend that out with E15 and eventually I did go back over this area another time with both of these colors just to intensify those dark brown areas. Now for the spots on the giraffe, I'm coloring in every spot with my E15 marker, filling them all in, and then I'm coming back with my E39 marker and adding a little shadow on the left hand side and bottom of each of those spots. Once I have that complete and all the shadowing in place, I will bring back my E15 and blend that out. I just love how this really helps the spots look like they're popped up and dimensional and have some texture to them. And this giraffe is so much fun to color. He is adorable. Giraffes are one of my favorite animals, so I loved it. I have even got to feed a giraffe at the zoo before, so yeah, I have a soft spot for them. Spot, that's funny. Okay, moving on, I... <laughs> And finishing him up, I did um, touch up the yellow on the giraffe as well, just to, um, I don't know, like some areas just needed a little bit more blending. So I did that also and used my colorless blender to remove as much of that yellow spot that was outside the lines as I could. And then what was left, I went over with my white gel pen. And then I added highlights to the giraffe. I love white gel pen highlights, so there's a lot of them on this guy. <laughs> And now I'm going to color in my little owl with his book. He's adorable using the same brown marker. So E39 and then blending that out with the E15. I'm going to use the same yellows as I used on the giraffe for his beak and his little feet. I like things to be matching. So it's perfect to use the same colors. For his book, I'm going to color it red because the stack of books, I wanted to have a rainbow effect. And when I planned it all out, I needed to each... Um, section of the stack of books to have three in each color. So <clears throat> that's why the top book in his hand is red and the next two are red as well. Also, when I colored under the glasses of the owl, I used my E15 marker and blended that out with E33 so it would be a little bit lighter. And this just helps give it that look that the glasses are actually glass to have it a little bit lighter than everything else around it. So now I have greatly sped this up for the coloring of the books. I, sometimes I think it's fun to watch speed coloring come together, especially on something like this. It's very simple Copic coloring. Some of the, the books I didn't do any blending and some I did. It was just fun to bring these to life in rainbow order. It just I love bright colors, so I had fun coloring this. So now I'm on to the purple, and I will even even have room for pink on this stack of books. I also brought in my N1 marker to add some shadowing to any of the white areas as well. And I will use my white Jelly Roll pen to add accents to this as well. When you add accent to the glasses, it's nice to do the white line so it extends past the the outline of the owl. Does that make sense? It just helps 
add to the look of the glass. So there are the images all colored and the Copic markers I used. Now I'm bringing in the Slimline Surprise die set and die cutting out this main piece from an ink blended background, which I will show you how I did this in just a moment, but I wanted to show you this mechanism and how it works. You also, also need a pull tab type piece. You're gonna use this die to make it. I'm cutting it from an eight and a half by three and a half inch piece of paper. It has no top, so make sure you line up those two edge pieces with the top of your paper. These die cuts are from the Great Outdoors Slimline die set. I die cut the grass and the little treetops. And then I'm gonna use this same Slimline Surprise die to die cut the bottom of the grass so it will have that score line and line up perfectly with the bottom of my um, interactive card. I'm going to fold this first and then glue it on, which later I find to be very helpful to fold it first, so take note of that. I'll glue that in place at the bottom of the card. I did leave a little bit of the top part of the grass not glued down so I could tuck my giraffe's feet in it. Next, I'm taking the two treetops and figuring out how I want them to go across the top of the card. I'm gonna glue them together and then I will also use that same die to die cut the top of this so it will match up with the top of my card. Once I ran that through my machine, I realized that it stuck together. So I decided I would glue it down just like it was instead of trimming around it and it would span across the entire front panel of my card. And I really, really liked that look versus the grass at the bottom is just um, covering part of it with the outer frame still being blue. So I decided I would die cut a second piece of grass and fix that. You'll, you'll see that in a moment. Here I'm trying to fold this after I glued it down and it was much harder. So if you have a scored line and you are layering, make sure you fold it first and then glue it. So here's that extra piece of grass and you'll see it really transforms this card and it is just more cohesive. And this is very simple scene building, but it is more um, uniform with it going all the way across. All right, to put this card together, you want some 1 8th of an inch score tape or double stick tape and put it at the edge of the card on three sides, the two long sides and the bottom, but not at the top because that's where the mechanism will pull up and down. On this flap right here, you need 1 4th of an inch score tape. We're going to remove that one, but leave all the rest of the score tape with the backing on. Line this tab piece with, line it up with the bottom of that front piece that is, yeah, that piece, <laughs> the front panel piece. Now you see, I didn't quite line it up. I'm going to fix that later. My recommendation is to trim that off if you have some hanging off. Now I'm gluing my images to the front of this card, but I'm only putting glue so that they're glued down to the bottom half of the mechanism, not the top. That way when you pull this, the um, stamped images will then stand up. I did make another card, actually two cards, with this particular die set. I love it. I made one with a snowman holding a little coffee cup so cute. And that one, I put a $5 bill inside the card with a rip strip and a window sheet. It was crazy cool. So I'm going to link that for you at the end of this video if you would like to check that out. I'm going to have the little owl sitting on top of the books like he's reading to the giraffe in the forest. And I, But giraffes don't live in the forest. But you know what I mean, in the wilderness. We'll go with that. This is going to be the backer to my mechanism. You could always do this right on your card base. For some reason today, I decided I wanted a backer. So I ink blended around the edges with my tumbled glass, and then I'm coming in with a darker blue and doing splatter over the top of that. And that one was sea breeze. What is that color? Anyways, we'll move on. I am now making marks where my sentiment should go by placing the top of the card onto this background. Just really light pencil marks. And I'm bringing in two different stamp sets to create my sentiment. One is the Sweet Sentimini stamp set. The other is the Happy Sentimini stamp set. And I am building the saying that says, have a happy ever after day, which I thought was just a fun and cute sentiment to go with a card that has storybooks on it. So there, I'm just adjusting them on the block. And then I'm gonna stamp that down with some dark blue ink right there inside my pencil marks. 
Lovely. Then I can erase those pencil marks with a white eraser and just be really careful on top of a distressed ink background. You can kind of erase the ink, so make sure you do really light pencil marks if you need to do them. Then I'll remove that double stick tape and a little thing that I like to do is double up on my double stick tape on this part of the card. It gives it just the tiniest bit of lift and so I did do that on this card and then added liquid glue just so I have that wiggle room to move it around to make sure I get this lined up how I want it to be. So I press that in place and then this little strip that hung out past the bottom of my card I decided I would color it in so it wasn't so noticeable but it really just needs to be removed because it was preventing my card from really shutting all the way so i added glue to the back of that and adhered it to an eight and a half by seven card base that i scored at three and a half so here you can see the card open now when you first make a card like this it is kind of um, hard to pull that in and out. It can like catch. So you just wanna move it up and down a lot and it will help loosen it. And I will um, show you what else I did here in just a minute to loosen that up. So now I marked with a pencil where I wanted my ribbon to go. I'm gonna lay that there and staple it in place. So you have a little something to grab onto. So I stapled that in and then just cut off the ends, just like that. Okay, so now you can see here, I'm gonna kind of wiggle this back and forth, that's how you do it, technically. And then you're gonna take your anti-static powder tool and go around the edges, and that also helps this move up and down much more smoothly. The more you move it, the easier it's gonna slide. So don't feel like you ruined it if you have a little trouble opening it the first time. So there is my card. I am so pleased with how it turned out. I love the bright colors, I love the giraffe, and I had this idea that I had to make a bookmark to go with it. I'm trying all the things to get that bottom piece to go in, but it was not going. So I am going to be making a coordinating bookmark to go with this. You may have already seen this video on the Trinity Stamps channel, but I did not have time to get this bookmark done. So I decided I would add it to the video on my channel so you could check it out. I colored the owl the same exact way. And you see, I am backing both of these pieces with a second die cut. So I just die cut another one from plain white paper. I also did this on the card so they would be more sturdy because they would were standing standing up, very handy thing to do. And gluing the owl to the top of the books. And then to make this into a bookmark, I am going to add some ribbon to the back of the owl. So first I will put down some double stick tape where that ribbon is gonna go. I'll remove the backing from that. And then I'll have a really secure spot to stick my scrap of ribbon. I found another scrap and I'm going to fold that in half and stick it down to that double stick tape. Then in order to really secure it, I'll put another layer of the double stick tape, just really pressing those edges down and then I'll remove the backing from that. And now we need to hide the ribbon. So I have a third owl that I die cut from white cardstock and I will stick that down. I just want to make sure before I add glue to it that I am going to add glue to the right side so it will line up and then I, it's sandwiched between the double stick tape and the glue so it's going to be very secure holding that and pressing it down. Now I have the book stack die cut two more times. I am going to glue two together so that this back part is more sturdy as well. And I am using kind of a lot of glue because I want to make sure that glue goes edge to edge and it's not going to like catch on a book page. I also scored this stack of books just after the um, tall but the books that are standing up, and that is gonna be where my bookmark opens and closes. So I can add adhesive to the top stack of the books and glue the two pieces together. So above the score line is the only place the adhesive will go. Now, at the bottom of the bookmark, I'm going to add a magnet strip. So I put double stick tape on the back of this little scrap of magnet. And then what I'm gonna do is line the magnet up with the other one and then close the bookmark onto itself. So I know the magnet's gonna stick and not jump to the side, you know? So there we go. Then I'm gonna tr uh, trim off a piece of white twine and tie a bow around the top of my ribbon. I had already trimmed the ribbon down a little bit and then tied it 
which made it, you know, it's like squishes down a little bit and is shorter. So I wish I wouldn't have trimmed it before I put the, the little twine around it, but it turned out really cute with the twine tied it in a bow right there. So there is my matching bookmark. I think this would be fun to throw on the inside of this card. So would a gift card to like Barnes and Noble, or maybe if you have a Kindle reader to Amazon, you know, something like that. So here I am with my X-Acto knife trying to trim off this extra piece from my card. Um, I did pretty good. I just went very lightly several times and tried not to push down. I did get a little bit of a scratch mark, but that's why I moved this up pretty high on my card. So um, that it probably won't be seen the little tiny scratch mark because it's up higher than my sentiment. Now I did have a little bit of scraggliness and recently I had used my sanding eraser to clean up after myself when using my craft knife and it worked really good. So that really helped solve the problem. So it, when you make this surprise card, if your pull tab hangs down past the front of the card, trim it off before you glue everything down. So here's my bookmark. I'm opening it up and sticking it inside of my book and it works great. Sorry, that's a little bit out of the frame, but I will have a picture of it. I thought it was just so much fun and it's is pretty sturdy like it it hangs in the book pretty good I tried that out so I had so much fun making this I love giraffes and owls too so it was just fun to do and I hope that you are inspired to do a slimline surprise card like I said I have two other videos with this exact die set and I've made some fun things. So I'm, I'm gonna make sure, actually I'll link both of them in the description box for you below so you can check out both of them because they um, are totally different videos. One has a rip strip, the other one ha is like three scenes in one and it's a Christmas card so um, I would love for you to watch those. All right, I will be back again very soon with another stamping video just for you. So make sure you tune in. Feel free to subscribe if you're new here and ring the little bell. Let me know if you like this video with a thumbs up. And of course, I love chatting with you. I will be back again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.